Greetings the internet, this is Ninark, and welcome to a brand new tutorial series on making a Zelda-like in Construct 2. Now, I'm going to be making a Link to the Past style, uh, eight directional movement, rolling. Uh, can you roll on Link to the Past? Actually, I think that might be a later thing, but we'll do that anyway. Um, because, you know, everybody loves rolling. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to leave this project blank right now, actually, and leave all the settings by default because... Uh, um, I assume you've watched some of my other videos and have figured out some things and we'll go over what that stuff means when it matters lately, but later but um, if we would just want to get things started let's do that. So uh, the first thing we're going to do real easy, right click, insert new object and a sprite. Now I have some sprites that I made but they only are running animations and not idle animations uh, for some reason. They're from an old set that I made uh, for a project that never went anywhere but anyway uh, I'll be using those and I'll provide a link to them and they'll be free. You don't even have to buy them because there's no <laughs> idle animations. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but before we do anything, let's actually uh, import frames from files. If you click on the animation frame, your box might be down here if this is confusing. Um, import frames from files and then I have on my desktop somewhere, ignore all this, it's all top secret. Uh, here. Um, yeah, so we're going to import player down, player down. Uh, and you guys, you can see it's a little running animation of a guy. Um, we're going to be using this first frame as our idle animation, so let's delete this and actually change this uh, animation and we're going to call it idle uh, down. Idle down, the end, that's fine. Uh, so this is going to get a little crazy, so we're going to have to use subfolders and stuff because eight directions is a lot of directions to have uh, character animations. So so we have idle down right now, so let's actually right click and delete all the frames after the first one really efficiently like this. And uh, yeah, so we have a character. So let's leave them like that and we'll come back to the animations in a second. Um, so let's exit out of there and we have a little dude and he's there. now. Uh, did I already say that Construct has a forward eight directional movement behavior? Okay, well it does. Let's go to add new and we're going to go down here to eight directional movement. Cool. So you'd think that this would solve everything and you'd be wrong uh, because it's there's a lot of weird things that go on. So first of all, <laughs> our character rotates around trying to look really cool as he uh, eight directional movements around. We don't want that at all. Uh, obviously. Now there's also this acceleration. Now this isn't a thing that's in Zelda acceleration. If you want it you can use it. Um, I just prefer no acceleration but that might just be me. So um, yeah I'll show you how to do both. So let's exit out of this. Click on our character again and uh, let's go down to max speed and let's change it to like 250. That might be good. And I want to change the acceleration to like one with a lot of zeros behind it. Um, and that just means he'll instantly be as fast as he's going or instantly go to fast max speed and instantly go to uh, stop. Right. So direction we want eight directions. That's fine. You can change this to just other directions, as you can see here. So it's not just eight directions. False advertising. And then we want to go to set angle and go to no. Uh, so that that was what was turning our character around, looking all silly and stuff. Um, so yeah, we don't want that. And we can leave default controls as yes and initial state as enabled. Uh, now. When you play this, if you use the arrow keys, uh, it works just fine. Uh, but some people might want to use WASD, and so we're going to tackle that and using a controller at the same time. So let's exit out here, and uh, we've got to do a couple things. First, we've got to right-click, insert a new object, and we're going to go down to gamepad, because we're going to be using a gamepad, and then we're going to insert another new object, and that is the keyboard. Now, selecting these, just make sure that uh, Construct realizes that you have uh, the ability to control the game with a gamepad or a keyboard. Um, and I usually add a subfolder called MISC and I don't write it all in caps. I don't know why I did that time. And I just put those in there because they're annoying to look at. Um, and let's, you know, be even better. Let's add another folder and we're going to call it player. And we can drop our sprite in there and then we should rename him to link or kiln as the Romans say. Um, so yeah, so let's go into our event sheet. Now go down here to event sheet one and double click on that 
and we're going to add some events. Uh, I like to make groups. Um, yeah, I'll teach you guys good practice. So you're gonna you're gonna make a group and you're gonna call it movement. And uh, so you right click on here and add a new sub event. And we're going to do a couple things. So let's go to misc. Um, and we're gonna go. Let's do keyboard first. So we're gonna go to keyboard. Uh, on key is down. So not key code is down. That's different. Uh, that actually reads like the exact key code. However, your computer interprets keys. Ignore key codes. I don't know why it's there. I mean, I guess some people might use it. Anyway, I'm just being grumpy. So key is down. We're gonna click to choose, and let's start with left. So you're gonna press the left arrow. Or sorry, wrong. You're gonna press the A key. Uh, because we're doing WASD. So if you press the key and it's A, we want it to go to the left. So how we're going to do that, we're going to go to add action and then go to our player, uh, kiln. And then over here there is a object or a uh, behavior underneath eight direction that says simulate control. So you want to click on that and we already have it as left because A is left. So we'll do that and that's done. So we're just going to copy this three more times and do the same thing. So I'll go clockwise, W, W is up. So we'll simulate direction control up. D is right. So we're going to control to the right and then uh, change this to S and this will be eight direction pressing down. Cool. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so as you can see, I know you can't tell because you can't see my keyboard, but this totally works. It's the same as using the arrow keys. Um, pretend like you can see my keyboard. Uh, so let's make this a little more exciting and add a controller input as well. So in order to do this, we're going to go to our movement, go up to where it says A is down at the top, right click, we're going to add another condition. And we're going to go to MISC, Gamepad. Okay, now uh, I want to show you how to use the joystick because it actually works uh, I mean, you can figure out if button is down, then left, uh, you know, so let's, I'll just show you. Is button not index? Be careful about what you're pressing. Uh, on, what am I, here, is button down, and you can just go to D-pad, left, right, and you can figure that out. Uh, in order to use the uh, joystick, we want to go to compare axis. So we're going to do this, and so they're going to get a couple options here. Now, gamepad zero just means the first gamepad that Construct recognizes. So if you only have one in here, it's going to be gamepad zero. If you have two, um, it seems to prioritize my Xbox controller over my PlayStation controller sometimes. Um, honestly, later you'll this might be more important um, if you're doing a lot of gamepads and stuff, but usually you're pretty good at just leaving it at gamepad zero. So we're going to use the left analog x-axis. So this is left and right. Um, so we're going to go down to is less than or equal to negative 20. Now why this? Because uh, if you remember, uh, the numbers on the construct uh, layout go from zero up here, they go forward this way positively and positively down. So negatively is to the left. So negative 20 will be, uh, well a negative number, so if this is negative zero, negative zero doesn't make sense. Uh, this is negative one I guess. Um, then any number less than that would read that you were going to the left. I hope I'm explaining this well, man. It's, it's 5 in the morning, but I, I, I'll, you'll get it in a second. Now, the reason I'm using negative 20, why negative 20, AJ? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's because there's a little bit of a dead zone in, uh, in your controller, and it might make it really, really uh, precise in a bad way. If you if you use this as, like, as if it's less than 0 or greater than 0, it gets kind of weird because... Uh, the joystick isn't exactly perfect, um, so you might kind of drift around when you let go of your joystick. So negative 20 gives you a good buffer zone, and it doesn't feel like you have to push the, the joystick all the way to the left in order for it to work. As you can see, the numbers are from negative 100 to 100. So 20 is a fifth of that, so it's fine. Sorry for going into that really in depth, but I really uh, encourage you guys to learn what you're doing and not just copy me, because that solves nothing. So. Now, the problem here is that it's checking if A is down and if the gamepad left analog stick is less than negative 20. So we want this to be OR. So you can just right click here. Now, yeah, you can just right click here and go down to make OR block. And now it will read, okay, if the A is down, we'll go to the left. Or if the gamepad is at negative 20, 
also left. Now this could be a problem if you're using, say you have a player with a controller and a player with a keyboard, that might mess things up, but since pretty much you're only going to be playing this game by yourself, um, you don't really have to worry about that. So let's do, all. after all that mess, we're going to copy and we're going to not open that, we're going to copy and paste this a couple times. Now follow this closely, we're going clockwise from left, so when W is down, which is up, we're going to check to see if the left analog Y axis is less than or uh, equal to negative 20. So remember, negative is up, positive is down. So the Y axis is up and down, so uh, yeah, so negative 20, that's up. Now uh, we're going to the right now, as you can see here. So we're going to go stay on the X axis, and we're going to now go to greater than or equal to positive 20. Now keep close watch on all this stuff. It, I always make the mistake of leaving one left axis as Y axis or something. So just be really careful and mindful about what you're doing. Uh, so S is down and S is down. So we're going to change this to the uh, left analog Y axis. And then we're going to go to greater than or equal to positive 20. Positive 20. Positive is down. So uh, yeah, so if you have a controller, um, you can test this out now. Um, and as you can see, nothing works because of something that I messed up. Okay, as you can see, this one is an OR block, but this one is not, this one is not, and this one is not. So uh, that will make sure that everything works in theory. So let's try it out. Going up to the left, up to the right, down to the right, down to the left, and everywhere in between. Now what's cool about Construct is it actually, um, it figures out that when you're going down and to the left, you're not going faster than you're going to the right and left. This is a problem I see um, with a lot of games where where they're hand coding this, where it's, if you're giving like a plus one to the right and plus one forward, you're actually going the square root of two uh, speed diagonally. Um, and uh, Construct 2 uh, accounts for that, so it's all the same speed. But uh, you know, just be aware of that if you're ever making a game like this. I'm sorry I'm going super into detail with this, and I know it's simple stuff, but um, it's really important that you guys learn, and uh, I really encourage you guys to pay attention. Uh, so that surprisingly is going to be it for right now. We'll go into animations hopefully tomorrow if I have time. Um, I just really want to get you guys started again. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys had a good time, and I'll see you in the next video.